How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're going to be upgrading a Kohler DSAI ignition to a newer MDI ignition system. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So today in the shop, I'm working on a Craftsman DGS 6500. This is one of Craftsman's older, larger units. It has a 54-inch deck on it with a Kohler 26-horsepower Courage V-twin engine. You guys can see that I already have the engine cover removed as well as one of the ignition modules. This is what we're going to be talking about today because these engines had an issue with the ignition modules failing. And this engine here, which is a Kohler SV735, used what is known as a DSAI ignition system, which stands for Digital Spark Advanced Ignition. These use ignition modules, which are not like your typical solid state coil that we have now and it uses a little electric module to basically alter the ignition timing so what was the issue with this engine why is it in the shop for repair well my customer called me and complained that the engine would occasionally start to run rough and blow white or black smoke out of the muffler so they said pick it up it's probably just due for a service but we'd like you to figure out what the issue is first before you go ahead and service the riding lawnmower. So starting up this engine, it ran perfectly smooth. I could drive it around. There was absolutely no issue until I engaged the electric PTO switch to engage the blades on the mower deck. All of a sudden, the engine started to run rough, just like my customer said. And just like they mentioned, I did notice a little bit of smoke coming out of the muffler. Now, after doing some basic diagnosing, I did notice that there was a little bit of wetness on the exhaust tube here, which could either indicate unburnt fuel or possibly some oil leaking from an oil to cylinder head gasket blowout. So at that point, I hooked up this. It is an LED spark tester. You hook this end up to the spark plug cap or high tension lead. And then over here, you can hook this end up to your spark plug and you can actually run the engine with this hanging off the side. So with the LED spark tester hooked up, I ran this engine, we lost spark completely. So as you can see, I have a red X on this ignition module. It is a faulty unit. However, you cannot just go out and buy one of these because Kohler has discontinued this type of ignition system. The way that it works is they would supply these ignition modules with 12 volts. You guys can see it there. And then there's some ground wires to ground the coil out when you want to shut off the machine. Now, around 2010, Kohler started having a lot of these engines coming back under warranty for failed ignition modules, and their failure rate was higher than what Kohler would accept. They ended up finding out that these ignition modules were failing due to voltage spikes in the electrical system, completely frying those ignition modules. So in 2012, Kohler revised their ignition module design working with the ignition module manufacturer to install diodes inside of these ignition modules. Now, for those of you that don't know, when you have an electrical circuit that is AC or alternating current, current can flow both ways. However, when you install a diode, think of that like an electrical one-way check valve, it turns an AC or alternating current circuit into DC or direct current, meaning electrical current can only travel in one direction. Now, these ignition modules were failing mainly because of the electric PTOs being engaged. It would send an electrical surge through and fry the coil. That is very similar with vehicles. So if you were to engage your AC compressor or turn on your air conditioning on your car, normally there's going to be an electrical surge because the car's electrical system is put under more load. So manufacturers like Diode Dynamics, if you guys have watched my LED videos, they are installing diodes directly into their LED bulbs to prevent a bulb from failing due to one of those electrical surges. Now the engine I'm working on today is a Kohler Courage SV735. Now, I will put a picture up on screen because this issue happened to Kohler's of both the Courage and Command series of engines throughout a whole bunch of different model numbers. You guys can see it there. Basically, that was the original service bulletin back in 2010 that was revised in 2012 because they came out with these new ignition modules with the diodes installed in them. And you can see the upgrade numbers there. 
So for example, we have an ignition module part number 24-584-52. This is an original ignition module that does not have any diodes in it. And I know that because the updated version of that ignition module ends with an 8.9 as shown in that previous infographic. Now, before I got into looking up replacement ignition modules, I had to figure out whether or not the issue was with a failed ignition module or perhaps there was an issue farther back. Maybe one of these 12 volt charge wires that supplies these ignition modules with 12 volts had shorted out somewhere before it got to the ignition module itself. And the easiest way to do that is to uninstall the ignition module that works. I installed it onto the number one cylinder, plugged it in, tested for spark, and sure enough, we had spark. So using the information that I found on these ignition modules, I tried to purchase one of the upgraded ignition modules because I had one that was working and I had one that was not. However, what I discovered was that Kohler not only discontinued the original non-diode equipped ignition modules, they also discontinued the updated ignition modules that had the diodes installed in them. I guess they had the same exact issue even with the diodes installed. So fast forward one year to 2013 and I guess Kohler had enough of these issues. Too many engines were coming back. The failure rate of those ignition modules were higher than what they were supposed to be. And as shown in the service bulletin here, you guys can see that they came out with a DSAI upgrade kit which upgraded the old ignition modules to solid state ignition magnetos, which you would normally find on your typical riding lawnmower engine nowadays. So that is up on screen there. You guys can pause for that information. But the main thing that you have to understand is there's going to be two different kits. The Kohler Courage kit here ends in an 01S, while the Kohler Command kit ends in an O3S. They are going to be different, so you wanna specify that when you're ordering this kit, and I would highly recommend that you only purchase this ignition upgrade kit directly from Kohler. Here in Canada, this upgrade kit is going to cost you about $200, so it is a fairly expensive upgrade, However, you're going to have to do it because as I said, Kohler discontinued those older ignition modules. They do not sell them. You probably won't even find a used one because people just throw them in the scrap bin to prevent future issues. So you have to purchase both of these in the kit, which I have in front of me. And in this kit, you get some instructions. You get two ignition magnetos. We get three zip ties. We have a new grounding cable that we will have to install, as well as a little female disconnector there that we're going to have to hook up to the old grounding cable. Installing this kit is fairly straightforward. The first thing you're going to have to do if you're not as far as I am is using eight millimeter wrench or socket set. You're gonna to have to remove the top cover of the engine. It just slides right off. And then using an eight millimeter socket or wrench, you can remove the two eight millimeter bolts that hold these ignition modules into place. We're just going to be removing them. And we can also go ahead and disconnect the three prong connector right there because we are going to be discarding this wiring harness altogether. Whatever you do, make sure you do not discard the bolts. We are going to be reusing them for the new ignition magnetos. Now in the instruction manuals that Kohler provides, they do indicate there will be slight differences between a Kohler Command and a Kohler Courage engine, as well as the DSAI ignition system compared to a DSAM ignition system. So you wanna make sure which one you have first, and then you can simply follow the instructions in this booklet. Spend a few minutes, read through it, familiarize yourself with whatever version you have. It will tell you how to figure it out in this instruction manual. And you guys can see that on a Courage Twin for the DSAI, it's about 13 steps. It's super simple and I'll just take you through it today. So before we start cutting wires to remove anything or make any new connections, you should familiarize yourself with the electrical circuit just so that you know what you're cutting what you're gonna be discarding because there's one of two different ways you can do this. You can hook this system up where you remove these connectors and the small wiring harness together, or you can hook this system up and just leave these here tucked out of the way. However, you probably would wanna remove them just to make sure that nothing is shorting out because these are powered by a 12 volt wire right here. So I'll just briefly take you through the two ways that you can do this because the 
fuel shutoff solenoid or the anti-backfire solenoid connected to the carb depends on the 12 volts on this particular SV735 engine. And the 12 volts that's needed actually piggybacks itself off of these connectors here. So we can start at the carburetor side. Coming up here is our 12 volt charge wire for the electromagnet in that fuel shutoff solenoid. And we can see that it runs back along here into this connector here, which then piggybacks off of this red wire, which runs all the way back down to this red wire in this connector, which then comes down to this red wire right here. So Kohler wants you to snip the white wire as close to the connector as possible off of this circuit right here. So we would be making a cut right there. And then what you would do is use this white wire and connect it to your new coil grounding wires. Now I've seen some other videos on this. Taro Fixes All did a video where he was able to just snip it, hook it up, and his fuel shutoff solenoid in his video, I believe he was working on a Kohler command. So again, this is a Kohler Courage, slightly different. His fuel shutoff solenoid was wired independently. Whereas again, on this one, it's piggybacks. So the two ways that you can do it is snip both of these wires right here, the red and the white, and then using the red wire, you would wire in your fuel shutoff solenoid. That would be the way to do it if you wanted to completely remove this harness altogether. However, that's a little bit more work. So if you didn't want to do all that, basically Kohler's instruction manual just says to take this wire off of this harness right there and cut it as close to the connector as possible. That way, when you turn the key on, your fuel shutoff solenoid is still getting power. And when you turn the key off, both of your new ignition magnetos or ignition coils will get grounded through that white wire. If you do it the second way, you will have to leave these tucked out of the way. And because they are charged with 12 volts, as I said, you wouldn't want this touching metal because it would ground out short to ground, not good. You don't want to leave something like that exposed. So you might want to cover that up with electrical tape if you guys are going to be leaving those hooked up. So as you guys know on my channel, I try to keep things as simple as possible. However, I always try to do a professional job. So got the multimeter out. I'm going to rewire this thing myself and I'm gonna show you guys how I'm going to do it. It's gonna be quite simple. Again, we've back traced the wire that we need to supply 12 volts to the fuel solenoid and that goes into the red wire there. So what I've done here is I've taken my multimeter right here. It's in 20 volts DC. so direct current because we're going to be looking for battery power. And what I've done here is I've taken the red lead and stuck it into the connector that goes directly to the fuel shutoff solenoid. That's our 12 volts. And then I've taken the black probe and stuck it into the green for a ground. And what I'm going to do here is just turn the key into the run position and the fuel solenoid clicked. And you guys can see we have 12.34, 12.33 volts. So that means that I can cut this wire that comes out of the fuel shutoff solenoid. And I'm going to cut it as close as I can to the connector right there. Then I'm going to come back to the wire that I need to cut, which is the white one. And instead of just cutting the white one as close as I can to this connector, I am also going to be cutting the red wire. And then as you can imagine, what I'll do is I'll just take the red wire from the fuel shutoff solenoid, connect that to the red wire here, and then we can completely remove this old harness and everything will be wired up nice and neat. And then if you wanna check the connection of that white coil grounding wire that we're going to be using, then what you can do is take one of your probes from your multimeter here and stick it into the connector that has the white wire going into it. On the multimeter itself, I've set it to 200 ohms of resistance. And then I've taken the other lead and I've once again connected it to the green wire there. So that is our ground. And then I'm doing all of these tests with the parking brake engaged, but now we're testing the ground because we wanna make sure that the white wire is grounding only when the key switch is turned off. We don't wanna have a connection to ground when the key switch is in the run position. So with the key switch currently in the run position, we do not have a connection because there is no resistance being shown. However, if I go back to the key switch right here and I shut it off, watch what happens to the multimeter. 
we now have 1.1 1 .1 ohms of resistance, one ohms of resistance, which is going to be acceptable. So that means that when we shut the key switch off, what's happening is it is going to ground out the ignition magnetos and shut off the engine properly. So now that we've identified what circuits do what, we can now take some snips and we are going to cut the red wire and we're going to cut the white wire. So now we have a 12 volt supply right here for our fuel shutoff solenoid, which grounds through the base of the carburetor itself. So it doesn't need its own separate ground. Now to remove the wiring harness to gain access at our solenoid charge wire there, I will be snipping these zip ties. We have new ones that we can install and we're going to be removing this old wiring harness anyways. So just go ahead and cut those off now. So with those wires cut and the zip ties cut, you guys will get a little better understanding of what I'm going to do here. We're just bringing that red wire over to here. I'm going to use a butt connector to hook that up. So our fuel solenoid will be powered. And then we can go ahead and remove what appears to be just a simple ground wire going down to that bolt right there. Now, before we go ahead and remove this connector here for that ground wire, you have to understand this is an intake manifold bolt. It is going to be torqued to a specific setting. We would probably have to retorque that if you wanted to do things by the book. Now, because this is just simply a ground wire, you don't have to worry about a short to ground with a ground. It's always going to be touching the chassis and grounding itself out. So you can cut this off as close as you want to that bolt head, and there should be absolutely no issues. So we're just gonna snip that right off. And then coming from the fuel solenoid, we are going to snip that wire, the red one. Try to snip it as close to the connector as possible to give yourself enough cable to get over to the other red cable that we're gonna have to make the connection to. And then it'll pretty much be factory. If you ever have to remove this carburetor for whatever reason, cleaning it or installing a new gasket, you can just unplug that just like you could from the factory. And with that ground wire now cut off, we can completely discard this entire wiring harness. You're not going to need that anymore. So what I'll do now is start stripping back the wires and getting things ready to wire up. So as you could imagine, we're going red to red. I will be using a simple butt connector to do that. And then I've cut a piece of red heat shrink that fits over that butt connector longer than the butt connector itself. So I can use a heat gun to seal that up. And some viewers in my video that I did previously hooking up that electric PTO clutch on the Husqvarna said I should have soldered the wire for a more permanent connection. As long as you do the connection right, I've never had one of these butt connectors fail. Make sure you get a good crimp on it. Make sure you pull that wire. It's nice and tight. It's solid. I've never had a PTO clutch fail because of a wiring job that I've done incorrectly. So just know these little butt connectors here, they work perfectly fine. What I would not recommend is those ones that you see advertised from like eBay or Amazon, where you use the heat gun and it melts the solder to make that connection. Those I would not recommend because I have seen those fail, not from me because I don't use them, but I've heard bad reviews on them. So again, I would always recommend an actual butt connector where you're using a crimping tool like this to crimp it down and make a tight connection. Again, always put your heat shrink tubing over the wire before you secure your butt connector so that you can slide it up and heat shrink that after you've made that connection. So I've crimped that butt connector down sufficiently. I've given the wires a pull that is not coming out. So now we can slide the heat shrink tubing over top of that and use the heat gun to seal that up. So now that this connection has been weatherproofed, I guess, or at least is weather resistant, then I can lay that down around there. You guys can see everything will be nice and contained and I can use those new zip ties to secure that It'll pretty much look factory. So now we can move on to hooking up our coil grounding wire, which is gonna be the white one. So I'll take you back to the workbench and we'll look at the connector that we have to use for this. So the way this system works is you are going to connect the blue and the red connector to the coils or the ignition magnetos themselves. Those are going to be directly on the engine side. And then this one off here is going to hook up to the white coil grounding wire. So we have 
a male connection in there. And then this one is a female connection right there. However, you guys can see there's this huge chunk of plastic. I guess that's from like the molding process. So we're going to have to cut that off so that we can plug that in because it won't fit as it is now. So with that large piece of plastic now removed from the female disconnector, we can now hook this up to the white wire and then crimp it into place. Now inside of this female disconnector, there is a stopper inside of there, so it doesn't allow a whole bunch of wire to go into the disconnector flat terminal itself. So you don't want too much copper wire coming out of there, just enough to stick into that connector. Once you get that crimp down, again, give that a pull, make sure that your crimp is tight so that won't come off. So now we have our wiring harness pretty much done up until this point. We can now move on to installing the new ignition coils. First step is going to be rotate the flywheel clockwise so that the magnet on the flywheel itself is away from the coil mounting towers. We don't want the magnet pulling the new coils into the flywheel. And using a little bit of emery paper, which is just fine automotive sandpaper, I'm just cleaning up the posts on the engine for the coil so that we have a nice clean connection. You just don't want any dirt on there. And I did want to make note before we go ahead and install this coil. Kohler's instructions do say to install the round side down towards the engine with the flat side up. At this point, we can install our new ignition coils. Now, they are going to have slotted holes, so you're going to want to slide them as far back away from the flywheel as possible. Install your bolts, and we'll get them snugged up but not tight because we are going to be setting an armature air gap, which is the distance these terminals are away from the flywheel magnet. Now to save a bit of time, I'll show you how to properly install one, and then you can just repeat the steps on the second coil. At this point, you wanna rotate the flywheel always clockwise so that the magnet is just before the ignition coil here. Take a look at your magnet. I'm going to clean that surface up with a little bit of emery paper, the same sandpaper we use to clean those towers there. And then what we'll do is we are going to set the armature air gap or the distance between this coil and that flywheel magnet to eight to 12 thousandths of an inch. Don't worry about getting it perfectly clean. You just want to get the majority of the rust off of that magnet. Now, if you're regulars on my channel, you'll know that my business cards measure 12 thousandths of an inch exactly. So because Kohler states that they should have a gap of anywhere between eight and 12, that would put 10 thou in the middle. So I found a business card here that measures exactly 10 thousandths of an inch. So I'll just be using this business card to set the gap. So with the bolts in, but not tight, just pull back on the coil as you rotate the flywheel clockwise slide your business card in and then let the magnet pull the coil into position at which point i would highly recommend using an eight millimeter socket and just a ratchet to hand tighten these up you do not want to strip those threads remember these are fine thread bolts going into aluminum so could be very easy to strip now kohler does give you a torque spec so if you do want to torque these ignition coil bolts down the spec is 35 to 55 inch pounds so you could split the difference and torque those down to 45 inch pounds if you want so with one coil installed and properly gapped to 10 thousandths of an inch, I'm just fitting the high tension lead or the spark plug wire into the little groove and under this bend here on this little heat paneling. And then on the wiring harness for the grounding cable and also the 12 volt charge wire for the solenoid, I've just fit it into this little groove that they've put in the heat shroud there to protect it from the plastic engine cover that goes up on top there. And then as I said, using the zip ties, once we get the white wire connected here, we're going to zip tie everything to the intake manifold just like it was from the factory. It'll be super neat and tidy and we won't have to worry about any loose wiring getting into the way of the rotating flywheel or around the hot cylinder heads. All right, so both ignition coils are now installed. I have my zip ties tied up so that the wires are underneath these little kind of tabs, I guess, on the top of the intake manifold. So I'm just going to snip the ends of those zip ties off. Like I said, that keeps everything nice and clean and tucked out of the way. And as I explained on the workbench, the blue connector hooks up to the coil on this side. And then I've looped this back to tie into our grounding wire that comes out of the wiring harness there. And then zip tied, like I said, ran that all the way down along 
nice and neat. So what I would recommend is remove the spark plugs because it will make turning over the flywheel a little bit easier. You always wanna make sure that the flywheel magnet doesn't come into contact with your brand new coils. So turn this over by hand. Again, it's easier with the spark plugs out. Make sure there's clearance and then we can fire this thing up. And then because we use the multimeter to establish that our red wire there will supply 12 volts to the fuel shutoff solenoid there. When I turn the key, listen for the click. So that's working properly and we should be able to fire this engine up. So let's see if this thing fires up. I have the throttle up about three quarters. The choke will be engaged. I'll turn this over. There might be a little bit of smoke from some unburnt fuel in this cylinder here, but the engine should fire up. There you have it guys, how to update the old DSAI ignition modules to a newer MDI magneto ignition, or as I like to call them, new solid state ignition coils. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. This is a very common issue with these Kohler engines. The old ignition modules fail due to voltage spikes and need to be replaced with the new ignition coils. But with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel up for new content, and as always, guys, thanks for watching.